Hello and welcome. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. In this new episode of Virtual Encounters, we have Olympic medalist, champion shooter Gagan Narang. He won medals in Commonwealth Games in 2006, 2010, 2014. He won medals in Asian Games. Uh, he has won several medals in World Cup also. He's also the recipient of Padma Shri, also the uh, highest uh, sporting honor, Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna, and he has also won Arjun Award. Welcome, Gagan. Good to have you on Virtual Encounters. First of all, uh, how have you been? How are you doing uh, in these difficult times? And how are you training yourself uh, in the sense that uh, mentally are you ready to face these kind of uh, challenges? Well, I think, Abhishek, uh, you can never be ready for these unprecedented yeah. times. And... Uh, Things that have never been imagined are happening. So yeah. these have been difficult times, but uh, um, all challenges are faced head on by by sports people because in life uh, uh, they have many many different challenges. And uh, of course, nobody can be ready for them. But we try and uh, do our best in the present situation and the existing situation and try and make it better. So it's been okay so far, and I hope that it gets better from here on. So, did you also do mopping, household activities, cooking, etc.? I did. That goes without saying because, uh, I mean, when when uh, uh, when the lockdown started, you know, everything was uh, out of sync. And yeah. Uh, so, to, so, yeah, I mean, we uh, tend to rediscover our, ourselves because suddenly we have so much time on our hands and we don't know what to do with it. So, we start yeah. with uh, something as simple as waking up... Uh, pretty early in the morning and sleeping on time. So start sorting your routines out, sorting your food out, sorting things around you. So there was a lot of junk in my house, which I would collect from all my trips. Uh, so yeah, sorting my room out. So a lot of cleaning, a lot of reorganization was 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 due. And uh, this kind of gave us the time to kind of uh, refresh and restart. No, but Gagan, uh, on a serious note, is it difficult uh, to stay positive in these kind of scenarios? Uh, sports persons are mentally very, very strong, very, very tough. But these are unprecedented times. Even a sports person would have, wouldn't have been taught uh, to deal with these kind of situations. Well, like I said, you can never train for something like this. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, and uh, when when a, when a situation comes, you know, you kind of uh, uh, are taken aback for a period, a brief period of time. But eventually, I think we kind of tend to bounce back with whatever uh, positivity we have uh, in us and try and create that as much as possible around us as well. So mm. yes, uh, you can never be prepared, but uh, you what, what can you do? Absolutely, Gagan. Uh, we all hope that things come in place soon. But Gagan, uh, how should the sport now you think restart? You're the best person to answer this question, especially shooting. No international shooting uh, till when we don't know. And NRAI perhaps need to uh, uh, schedule a robust uh, domestic calendar to start uh, shooting all over again. Well, Abhishek, I think for a for a robust, uh, I mean, I mean, for for sport to resume, I think it's very important. I mean, we can do a lot of local competitions, so that's that's not the issue. But you know, suddenly, if the international federation decides to have competitions. That would throw the local competition out of things. So it's very important that the international federations kind of put their heads together and and kind of figure out how they can do uh, and how they can restart uh, the sporting calendar. Based on that, I think the Indian federations uh, should uh, have a domestic calendar, and then um, they will the, the the athletes, the shooters will have the motivation to kind of start training again. Right now, we see that couple of a uh, couple of academies and couple of sporting centers are open. But not many people are going to these centers. Although shooting and a few other sports, um, I would say, are are COVID-friendly sports uh, because they have uh, social distancing norms uh, yeah. in the way that they are played. But even then, um, it is it is a difficult challenge when you're dealing with kids who are who are young and when you're dealing with uh, people who are uh, uh, coming and going eventually every day. So yeah, I mean, you can never be sure about it. But uh, our job is to kind of create an ecosystem and give them the facility, follow all social distancing norms. We've divided our shooting ranges into partitions, have minimum 25% uh, occupancy sports so that there's no uh, crowding up of the space. Uh, kept in mind about ventilation and about safety procedures of the staff who's coming and so on and so forth. So, so, like, like, so I mean, that happens uh, during training, but when you have a competition, that's going to be another challenge 
totally mm. so we hope that uh, that something can be worked out soon and uh, and we are back on track and shooting more than sport i think it's a mental aspect also gagan what are you telling uh, uh, ilavnil uh, you are her mentor and uh, and lot of uh, we have a young bunch of shooter sitting on olympic quotas well there are a couple of uh, shooters that i mentor and a uh, uh, few of them are in hyderabad so yeah i am mentoring mm. those uh, often but yeah i mean like i said you know technology has never been uh, acceptable so much uh, uh as it is being accepted in these corona times i mean who would have thought we would be doing an internet uh, uh distance chat show i mean you know if i would say that okay let's have let's have a chat you would just send a reporter and we would do it but now you know uh, distance learning yeah. and the internet becoming uh, uh, like more popular <laughs> we would tell the new generation that you know mobile phone come use karo let's let's yeah. stick, stick to your you know you let technology and now everything is running on technology mm. so you actually telling them that you know you start using mobile phones and start studying so <laughs> yes uh, we have been in touch on uh, on video calls uh, on training but i mean it has its own limitations it's not something that yeah. is 100% effective but in these times like i said uh, we should do whatever we can Mm. but don't you think gagan uh, sport is all about momentum uh, if for example someone books an olympic quota his preparation everything changes that i have 6 months 7 months or maximum one year i have to maintain my fitness up to this level and i have to uh, maintain my a game at this point in time don't you think now olympic shifted postpone i should say uh, one year now by one year uh, the preparation changes and the momentum also changes oh yes i mean uh... forget the momentum i mean if this was a if this was a situation where where it just postponed without a pandemic yeah, yeah. it would have been a different scenario mm-hmm. but because of the pandemic it's been like a it's been like a shock in a way and, and you know when you have to completely stop doing something that you're doing for 5 6 hours a day and then completely occupy yourself in other things so that brief yeah. period of 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 pause has kind of shook everyone from inside but uh, everyone's been there i mean they have figured out uh, their own plans they they have set their uh, press the reset button on their training and uh, and uh, if you see you know everybody is doing video training they are doing physical training something that they never got time for earlier uh, pre- prepare themselves mentally prepare themselves physically get rid of all the aches and pains you know uh, and then get into the competition zone when when things will get back to normal so it's been it's been a challenge but i think every shooter out there whether it's apoorvi whether it's anjum whether it's uh, ella vinil whether it's uh, um so many shooters out there except uh, the outdoor uh, events like the shotgun shooters and the and the 50 meter rifle shooters they have a challenge yeah. because yeah but uh, all the air rifle shooters ha- have established uh, effective shooting ranges in their houses and very close to their houses that they are able to train and their coaches have been behind them um, on virtual training sessions and trying to kind of uh, effectively solve these problems so i think uh, that's that's something that's happening and uh, and they're they're taking care of their nutrition like they never been before because they're at home and they're in a controlled environment we would travel out and you know we would eat almost anything the nutrition yeah. so now mm. they have good good nutritious uh, diet at home and so on so it's been very effective mm. it's about gagan how you take things uh, half glass full or half glass empty and you're saying it's a blessing in disguise guys for some of the shooters but uh, gagan how do you see the future of um, indian uh, younger crop uh, coming up uh, with the likes of manu bhakar mehuli is there your uh, award uh, elavnil is there saurabh choudhary abhishek is there uh, they are all capable of winning medals in olympics you think well in a sport like shooting you know the selection happens in a way that you know someone who is not capable doesn't go so mm. it it's, it's a tough uh, qualification and earlier you know it was difficult it was it was something that we would we would really something that we should really think about that earlier we would just our goal would be to just get a quota place and represent or participate in the olympics but uh, um, our generation said that okay i think participation is something that is that is gone back we should try and see if we can finish in the final or win medals mm. some of us 
this generation, the new generation, the new crop, the names that you just took, they don't want to participate in an Olympics. They don't want to be in the final in an Olympics. They just want to win the gold medal. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Pinnacle of, of, of uh, Olympic glory. So they're not going there for participation on winning a bronze. They're aiming for the gold. And uh, and each and every one has the potential to kind of win and uh, make the best footer win. And, and at the end of the day, uh, the Indian flag uh, matters and uh, that is what that should be unfolded. Whether it is Anjou, whether it is Apurvi, whether it is Saurav, it has to be from India. I mean, I would wish that it is from India. So you're saying the mindset has completely changed, a fearless uh, attitude that they have. But Gagan, how has that transition uh, taken place in Indian shooting earlier? Uh, it was uh, Rajivardhan Singh Rathor, then Abhinav, when you, uh, Vijay Kumar, then won uh, the medal in Olympics. It's, and uh, now it's the entire crop and the mindset that you just mentioned. How is it, has that transition taken place? Well, during our times, I think, you know, a lot of information was missing in the system. We would okay. uh, depend on coaches. We would depend on, on, on um, external help. Uh, we would watch other shooters shoot. We would watch uh, uh, and figure out what, what's happening across the world. But now that the founder and that knowledge and the system, that knowledge and the technology and the, and the training methodology is back into our system through our uh, coaches. So if you, if you see our coaches, yeah. they have been elite themselves. And uh, all that knowledge is coming back into the system. Mm. So uh, the benchmarks have already been set. So these kids in today's generation have to just do a few notches better than those benchmarks. The path has already been laid for them. For us, we had to... We had to find our ground, dig the path, dig the road, and then make the path. So mm. that has been a paradigm shift in Indian shooting, and mm. uh, that is actually contributing towards uh, the base and so many medals uh, being won uh, by the athletes. Of course, the system is much better now with Hello India coming in and so many yeah. centers coming, federations, uh, the NRAI uh, having uh, policies in place. The import of equipments has become uh, much easier earlier importation of equipment would would take one year or even more sometimes uh, which by which the when the rifle or the ammunition would come you know it would be outdated and we were we were competing with inferior uh, technology but yeah. now we have we have the same we have the best weapon and it, it comes to you within a week or 10 days so that's been a that's been a good shift and uh, a positive uh, trend towards the whole eco uh, towards um, uh, bettering the whole ecosystem so that's producing the results and Gagan, also I was talking to Shimon Sharif a few days earlier, uh, earlier and uh, he came out with the uh, concept of online shooting championship. Uh, uh, and uh, he said that uh, it's a good way to uh, keep young shooters engaged uh, through online. Uh, they cannot practice now with this way. Uh, they can at least get into the groove again. How did you like the idea? Well, uh... Frankly speaking, online shooting and online coaching was something that was not uh, uh, effective until mm. COVID. Mm. And, but this pandemic, like I said, <laughs> has set benchmarks. And uh, having a having a online shooting competition instead of not having anything at all is a welcome sign. And uh, I think uh, these competitions uh, should continue to happen to keep the sports people the keep keep the shooters engaged. If you look at the age of these players, Manu Bhakar is there, Anish Bhanwala, Saurabh Chaudhary, they are all below 20, Lavnil is also 20, 21. Is this becoming a sport of younger generation? Well, uh, yes, definitely. I mean, if you, you see more youngsters coming into, into the mm. play and these youngsters are fearless and talented and most importantly, they have no excess baggage. So, they are totally fearless. But we have stalwarts like uh, uh, Sanjeev, we have, we have Anurad Singh, we have Rahi Sarnobat. So... Yeah. So we have we have a good mix of uh, seniors and juniors, and I think uh, they have someone to look up to in the team as well. So hopefully yeah. it's going to be a well-balanced team. Hmm. And also, Gangan, India have been doing well in uh, Olympic sport. Uh, I mean, be it uh, archery, shooting is there. I mean, any sport you take, India have been fairly doing well in athletics now also. But uh, do you think now that a sporting culture has developed in India where uh, parents are also not scared of uh, sending their ward uh, to sports schools? I mean, uh, yeah, you can go to a sports school also. Well, Abhishek, uh, I was always from a school of thought that said, uh, yeah. and not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah i always believed in that and that's how uh, my uh, upbringing has been but mm-hmm. yes there has been a big shift uh, in the mindset of people and uh, especially after so many victories i mean if you see olympic victories in hockey then yalno pilyander pays winning a medal yeah then uh, maneshwari kanan rajwardhan rathor rabinav me and vijendra sushil maricom yeah. sanan nehwal sindhu rakshi yeah. yeah they have been really brilliant and have been each one of them are role models in itself and motivating the youngsters to to take up to the sport and the encouragement they get from their state is also incentive enough for uh, for so many people to take up to sport besides mm. that i think the khelo india the fit india movement uh, started by our honorable prime minister and the sports minister mm. has uh, has transformed sport at a lower level yeah. earlier only if you would go to a commonwealth games yeah. or mm. to a to a big tournament you would get uh, assistance but now they are getting assistance from right from the time they think about you know that yes i need to get into sport the first step in itself is okay win the khelo india championship because you will get scholarship after you win that championship once mm-hmm. the scholarship is there the athlete gets a, a stipend when he when he gets a stipend he takes some money back home the parent is also happy that you know okay you are not a burden i mean your sport is being taken care of and you are getting some money home so that is mm. the most encouraging factor in their lives and mm. that is why this book is coming where in youngsters are uh, wanting to get into sport after khelo india they have the university games and then they have the national championships and then they have the selection and so on and so forth so that ladder has been formed that chain has been formed that mm. is a very positive sign and i think that will in the coming years transform uh, the sport uh, the sporting scenario in the country totally yeah and talking about your own journey gagan uh, you have won almost everything in your career a set of medals the entire set commonwealth asian games uh, you have got uh, uh, padma shri also arjun award khel ratna you have won olympic medal also but what has been your biggest regret not winning medal in 2008 in beijing because you were doing so well you were in form and not picking up your gun for so long after not winning in beijing tell us that story please well uh well i think these are unprecedented times and honestly i think if we survive to 2020 we should be happy so we <laughs> did in the past right now but yes uh, talking about beijing it was a big disappointment uh, uh, during that time because uh, i was uh, close so close but yet so yet so far from the yeah. from the medal but uh, but like i said i mean I, when you have a good support system around you when you have a good uh, uh, good good coaches uh, your family support i mean it, it's a different ball game altogether so you gather the strength and the energy to kind of uh, get back into the game and i think one and a half or two months later i shot the world record of 600 out of 600 yeah and won the world so so yes it was a, it was a blip a huge blip it was a, it was a huge burden for me and uh, and i was uh, delighted that i could uh, get that out in london in 2012 so i mean who supported you then i mean uh, your father that you picked up your gun again and uh, you did brilliantly again in the uh, next 2 3 months well everybody i think i mean you know when you're shooting the olympics on the firing line you're alone but mm. uh, behind you you have 200 people who are working and praying for your success or even more yeah that's but, right uh, but uh, i mean my parents my 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 physio my mind trainer my coach my friends they were all uh, um, didn't didn't stop believing in me although a lot a lot of people did and a lot of people said you know i think you know, that's the end of his career and he's not going to get back uh, i think that's his last olympics and so on and so forth but i'm happy that i could prove them wrong and uh, and they get back into the game and then a lot of medals after them and uh, in the hinds um, i mean do you now also think that you could have won gold in uh, 2012 london olympics uh, you were not very far well yeah i mean aisa hota to kaisa hota aisa hota i know i know i know i know that you're only as good as your last competition yeah. and uh, something that you should not always let uh, i mean get to your head so mm. Uh, yes uh, i mean uh, it could have happened it could not have happened i could not have won also so i mean uh, we we tend to think always you know positive so so I, yes i mean i was close but it was not meant to be i'm happy that i could finish with with the bronze and 
and uh, start the the medal tallies and uh, we put india on the medal in ta- medal board and have india's uh, best olympics uh, performance so far so it was good absolutely gagan and you know olympics is a completely different ball game in terms of uh, pressure and also the expectations but gagan uh, how do you deal with criticisms uh, you give them back uh, i'm not uh, particularly talking about media but uh, any any criticism that you face you give them back or you handle them calmly I always believe in let my gun do the talking rather than my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean your performance is peak, and uh, I think as a as a sports person, as an active sports person, I think you should let your gun do the talking and stay mm-hmm. away from this because it only distracts you. So you need mm-hmm. to be as as focused as you can be and uh, give your best uh, in every time you go out to the competition. Mm, like Sachin Tendulkar used to say that I always let my bat do the talking. Uh, but Gagan, uh, if you go a little bit back, uh, how did uh, shooting happen for you? Uh, your father bought a gun, and then uh, the rest is history. Tell us that story, please. Well, uh, I was uh, shooting since the last uh, three years. Let's say I started shooting in 1997, and mm. uh, I got my gun only in 2002. Hmm. Yeah, two thousand two. So I was playing all sports. I was uh, first year okay. into I was uh, changed to badminton, then changed to football, then changed okay. to foot, uh, 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 to to table tennis. So I was, I mean, as any youngster would, you know, dabbling all all sports around us. And uh, and somehow, you know, my dad took me to a shooting range one fine day and said, you know, why don't you try? So I tried shooting, and uh, I found it very interesting. And uh, I uh, uh, came back home. I filled the form. I came back home. I was excited to go to the next day. And I was in the evening uh, riding a cycle. And unfortunately, I had a fall from the cycle from the first floor down the steps. Oh. And fractured my right hand. So I came back home holding my right hand uh, uh, in my left. And I said, uh, Dad, the hand is broken. And And I, it's not moving, and he's like, "Why are you crying?" I said, "I'm crying because uh, I won't get to shoot tomorrow." <laughs> so I was really looking forward to that. The thought was that that naive that you know I was really looking forward. I was not worried that my hand's broken. I was worried that I won't get to go go shoot because I tried shooting and I liked it so much. So anyways, I recovered uh, after a few weeks uh, from that hairline fracture in my right wrist, and then. Uh, uh went to the shooting range there were people who were seeing me there and and saw talent in me and encouraged me to perform and uh, slowly i came to a stage where i had to make a decision to buy better equipment because i was shooting great scores but uh, uh my equipment uh, was uh, was not uh, allowing me to perform better so i was looking for a gun and i i, I used to shoot with a borrowed gun of another player okay. hmm. one day and went to the range so i would Go to the range. I would shoot for two hours, and then I would wait for others to come. So mm. the other senior would come to the range, shoot with sophisticated weapons. I would watch them shoot. I would learn from them, and then they would ask me if I would like to shoot two or three or five shots or ten shots from from a latest uh, German German made weapon. And I would wait for two hours until they finish shooting, just to shoot those five shots, and then walk back home. Mm. So. So a couple of days, the guy didn't come, and I was uh, upset about it. And I went back home, and I said, "Dad, I need my own gun. I'm, I'm suffering a lot, and I can't." So a few months later, he got me a gun, and I was the happiest uh, yeah. puppy in. Yeah. Uh, got me a gun, and only a few years later, I decided that we. I mean, I came to know that my parents had sold uh, their house uh, yeah. that we had to build. Our, I mean, the a piece of land that we had to build our house on. And uh, since then, we stayed on rented accommodation for almost 20 years in Hyderabad oh. uh, until the situation got better. And uh, that was a, that was a sacrifice that my parents made, not because they knew I would excel or win an Olympic medal for the country. It was just something that that they they did to see a smile on my face at, in those days. And I'm happy that I could uh, live up to their expectations and uh, perform to my best. So it has been a very interesting journey, and God has been kind. Yeah, very interesting and a very emotional story, also, Gagan and uh, your father. I think it has he has been your biggest support. Uh, but Gagan, uh, what next for you now? Uh, what's your ultimate aim, and what will actually make you satisfied in life? Ready for another crack? 
Well, frankly speaking, I'm happy that I'm giving back to the sport. Yeah. I still continue to shoot and train. And mm. uh, from an injury, I'm wanting to get back to the sport. But right now, I'm taking one thing at a time. Let's see how it goes. We have uh, the Olympics next year. We have an outside chance of 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 uh, some of our uh, uh, some of my students who I'm entering to get into the into the Olympics. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, we have great chances of uh, a lot of Indian shooters winning medals uh, in the Olympics. So fingers crossed for that as well. And let's see and let's take one step at a time. Right now, I've taken um, a, a recovery break. I have been at this sport for 23 years. But do you have so, that at the back of your mind that you want to come back to the shooting range? Well, I haven't left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, professionally so, yeah, again, good. again competing. Well, yes, definitely when competition starts, why not? Yeah, okay. And you uh, talked about the shooters. You have been a great mentor, Gagan, and hats off to you, the way that you are giving back to the sport. Uh, realistically, uh, what do you think? I mean, you, have, you must be having that in your mind that how many medals realistically India can win in uh, Tokyo Olympics 2021, I should say now. How, how many medals do you see Indian shooters Frank, winning? Frankly, Abhishek, I think Commenting on medals is something that that is uh, uh, not not something that I do because yeah, focus uh, should be more on the process. Yeah, every athlete uh, goes, every athlete who goes there goes there to win a medal. Nobody mm -hmm. goes there to lose. Mm -hmm. it's just that on that particular day, as to how uh, I mean, you have no, you have only your performance in control. You have nobody else's performance in control. Yeah, so you can only hope that you give your best. And that your best is good enough to win us that medal. Mm, rightly put forward by you, Gagan. And uh, two, three questions before I leave you. Uh, what has been your biggest achievement in life? Biggest achievement? Well, uh, to be able to contribute uh, in the success and sporting glory of the country and giving back to the sport now, I think would be my biggest personal achievement besides the medals I have won, of course. The world record was very special. Shooting 600 out of 600 in the Commonwealth Games in front of your home crowd was very special. And of course, the Olympic medal in 2012 was very special. Mm -hmm. You watch cricket also? Sometimes. But okay. rarely, rarely. And who is your favorite favorite cricketer? It has to be Sajin Tendulkar. I think uh, the way he's pushed his uh, body and mind over the past few yeah. years is absolutely remarkable. Uh, as an Olympic athlete, I think it would be Leander Pace, uh, seeing the kind of uh, performances he's given us, the joys and the memories. I think uh, they're all someone that we all look up to. Mm. Last question, Gagan. Uh, what advice do you want to give to the youngsters who aspire to be sports persons, professional sports persons? I mean, I could go on for two days to give advice. So it's go on, we have time. <laughs> it's to sum it up. Uh, sum it up uh, in, a, in a few minutes or a few seconds. Mm. But uh, I think one should believe in their dreams and uh, dreams do come true. And you have to make them come true. And we all have the energy and the power to make them come true. So do dream, do achieve and, and just enjoy the whole journey because, because uh, that's what matters. Hmm. Okay, uh, very nicely put forward by you. Thank you for those answers, Gagan. Uh, you were superb in your interview and hope we win more and more medals, especially in Olympics. Olympics is not that far away. And also, Gagan, uh, we want to see you again in the shooting range because you look the best there. Thank you, Gagan. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Basic. Wonderful job. Take care. All the best. Thank you. That's all we have in Virtual Encounter. Stay tuned for more news and updates. Namaskar.